Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of The Power of Dhikr. We're looking at different circumstances and different situations that happen to a Muslim during their life or during their daily life that they need the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal and some practical examples of the dhikr that they can remember or they can use. We said that the first uh, source uh, that we, we're recommending everyone at home to follow through and, and, to, and to be able to you know, sort of get their du'as and their dhikr from is the book Fortress of the Muslim and also the website du'as.com, D-U-A-S.com which has a lot of, of the dhikr, the adhkar and the du'as on there. So we're sort of using those as a basis just to have a look at some of the examples of adhkar that a Muslim says during their life in times of difficulty and in times of trial. So that's what we're talking about today. It's about times when things don't go well, times of difficulty, times of trial, times of sorrow, times of, you know, where a calamity strikes you, what kinds of adhkar, what kinds of things are we commanded to say at a time when things aren't going well for us. One of the du'as of the adhkar for anxiety and sorrow is that we say, Allahumma inni abduka, wabnu abdika, wabnu amatik, nasiyati biyadik, maadin fiya hukmuk, عَدَلٌ فِيَّ قَضَاءُكْ أَسْأَلُكَ بِكُلِّ اسْمٍ هُوَ لَكْ سَمَّيْتَ بِهِ نَفْسَكْ أَوْ أَنْزَلْتَهُ فِي كِتَابِكْ أَوْ عَلَّمْتَهُ أَحَدٌ مِنْ أَحَدًا مِنْ خَلْقِكْ أَوْ اسْتَأْثَرْتَ بِهِ فِي الْعِلْمِ الْغَيْبِ عِنْدَكْ أَنْ تَجْعَلَ الْقُرْآنَ رَبِيعَ قَلْبِي وَنُورَ صَدْرِي وَجَلَاءَ حُزْنِي وَذَهَابَ هَمِّي This is one of the du'as that we say for anxiety and for sorrow. So Allah Azza wa Jal uh, tells us, the Prophet Sallallahu teaches us to say, O oh Allah, I am your slave and the son of your slave and the son of your female slave. My forelock is in your hand. I, you have complete control over me. Your command over me is forever executed and your decree over me is just. So we're affirming our belief in Qadr as we said in the episode about La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I ask you by every name belonging to you. So we're using the names and attributes in our dhikr. Again, this is something we've talked about. Which you named yourself with or revealed in your book or taught to any one of your creation or preserved in the knowledge of the unseen with you that you make the Qur'an the life of my heart and the light of my chest and a departure for my sorrow and a release for my anxiety. And Allah Azza wa Jal will take away the anxiety and the sorrow of the heart of anyone who recites this supplication as is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are adhkar that you say when you're afraid of someone. There are adhkar that you say when you are feeling pain. For example, when you're in a state of pain, you put your hand on the area where you have your pain. For example, let's imagine that you have it in your head. You put your hand where the pain is and you say, Bismillah. Bismillah, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, in the name of Allah, in the name of Allah, three times. And then seven times you say, A'udhu billahi wa qudratihi min sharri ma ajidu wa uhadir. That I seek refuge with Allah and His might, His power, from the evil of what I find and what I fear and what I'm wary of. And you say that seven times while you're keeping your hand on the place where you have a pain. I know many, many, many people have been relieved of severe migraines, severe headaches, severe pains in the body by making this dua. When they trust in Allah, they believe in Allah, they have the proper belief and they put that belief into practice through the duas that they believe. And these, these duas, subhanAllah, another dua that you have at a time of anxiety and a time of sorrow is that you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan wal-ajzi wal-kasal wal-bukhri wal-jubn وَضَلَعِ الدَّيْنِ وَغَلَبَتِ الرِّجَالِ وَضَلَعِ الدَّيْنِ وَغَلَبَتِ الرِّجَالِ So, you make these, this dua contains that you seek refuge with Allah from many, many things. From alham wal hazan, from sadness and depression, from sadness and anxiety, from anxiety and sorrow. 
alham, that thing that just bothers you all the time. You know, you're just constantly thinking about it all the time. And it hasn't the sorrow, the, the depression, you know, you feel the sadness you feel. And I seek refuge with you, O oh Allah, from al ajzi wal kasl from being unable to do something or being too lazy to do it. And this encompasses every situation in your life because in your life you're either, if you can't, you're not doing something you want to do, either you're unable to do it or you're too lazy to do it. And so you ask Allah to save you. Wal bukhl wal jubn. And al bukhl is stinginess and al jubn is cowardice. So again, two evil things that people uh, take people away from the path of Allah is that they are stingy and that they are, uh, that they are too frightened to act. And then of course, Dala'iddain. And Dala'iddain is when the kind of debt, not the kind of debt that you can pay back, but the kind of debt that overcomes you so badly that you are so burdened that you find yourself falling into the haram by lying through riba, through many things, and غلبت rijal and being overcome by men. So this is also from the dua, the comprehensive duas that we say when we feel sadness, when we feel depression. From the du'as that we say when, or the dhikr that we make when we feel distressed, when we feel upset, is that we say, Allahumma rahmataka arju, fala takilni ila nafsi tarfata ain, wa aslih li sha'ni kulla, la ilaha illa ant. This is from the du'as that we say, O oh Allah, I hope for your mercy, affirming hope and fear as we talked about in a previous episode. So don't leave me to myself. For even the blink of an eye, I'm in desperate need of you, O oh Allah. Don't leave me to myself for even the blink of an eye. Correct all of my situation for me. Correct everything for me. La ilaha illa ant. Again, referring back to the most beloved of the adhkar to Allah Azza wa Jal. La ilaha illallah, which we've talked about before. Also from the du'as that we have are the du'as for those or the dhikr that we use when things become difficult. So we say, Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahlan wa anta taj'alu al-hazna idha shi'ta sahlan. Oh Allah, there is no ease except for what you make easy. And if you wish, you make that which is difficult easy. So those things which are too difficult for us to do, we say this dhikr, we remember Allah and those things become easy for us. When we're struck by a calamity, we mentioned before, we say قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعَلْ Or we say قَدَرُ اللَّهِ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعَلْ It's the decree of Allah and, and He does whatever He wants. And this gives us a feeling when these calamities happen, when these difficulties happen, we feel like we can overcome it with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. From the most beautiful of the adhkar that we can say when things get difficult for us is for us to say حَسْبِ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ حَسْبِ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Allah is sufficient for me and how wonderful of a trustee he is, of a person to trust in. If something overtakes you, you say, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. A beautiful phrase that we say at a time when uh, we are struck by calamities, when we are in a time of difficulty, when we are fearing uh, that we are going to be overcome with something, that again, we refer it back to Allah Azza wa Jal, just like saying La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So we see from this that whatever situation this Muslim is in, no matter how difficult that situation is, no matter how many uh, calamities and difficulties and hardships come in the way of that person, there is a dua that will cover those hardships. There is something that will take you away from that difficulty, whether it's depression, whether it's sadness, whether it's inability, whether it's laziness, because all of these are things, whether it's stinginess, whether it's cowardice, whether it's the kind of debt that overcomes a person, whether it is you know, the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, sort of uh, being overpowered by men such that you're in a state where you are, you're helpless and you're unable to do anything. Each of these things, they have a dua, they have a dhikr, which is going to take you away and which is going to give you uh, protection and which is going to return you back to Allah Azza wa Jal. And of course, these adhkar, and we must make a point uh, about this towards the end of the episode, to say that these adhkar, they have to be accompanied by certainty in the heart. They have to be accompanied by you feeling in your heart that you are going, inshaAllah ta'ala, that Allah is going to answer your dua, thinking good of Allah Azza wa Jal, that remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not saying these adhkar and then saying, what hope have I got? I'm lost, I've gone, I'm finished. You know, and I just say these du'a and it doesn't make any difference to me. But you say it, you mean it, you say it, you think about it and subhanAllah, it changes your whole life because whatever situation you are in, 
you have a dhikr and a, 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 from the adhkar that you're going to use and you're going to focus upon, you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua, you think good of Allah azza wa jal, and it corrects your affairs. So, so far we've looked at a number of different things. We've looked at morning and evening, we've looked at the prayer, we've looked at um, times of uh, calamity and troubles, we've looked at many different situations, we've looked at so many different times, and even these were just scratching the surface in reality on the times when a Muslim remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because literally you remember Allah all the time. When you go out of the house, you remember Allah. When you come into the house, you remember Allah. In the bathroom, you remember Allah Azza wa Jal. When you walk in, when you walk out, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, from waking, from sleeping, from every moment of your life, you're in a state of remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. In the final episode, uh, of this uh, series of episodes on the power of dhikr we're going to look specifically at the issue of protection from the shaitan and the adhkar which has been given to us to protect us from the shaitan and the plots of the shaitan and then we're going to conclude by recapping all of the things that we've covered in the series so far so please do join us for the final episode of the power of dhikr inshallah until then i leave you in the care of allah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Shoulder fills away and change my dead heart. Make me alive again. Give me a fresh start. So change my heart, please. Wash the fins away. Don't leave me drowning here alone and astray. Don't leave me drowning here alone and astray. Wash all the filth away and change my dead heart.